Well, President Trump had a pretty testy phone call with Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull over the weekend. The American president ripped a deal made by President Obama to accept 1,250 refugees from Somalia, Iraq, and Iran that Australia doesn't want and wants to send here. Well, yesterday the president tweeted this, do you believe it? The Obama administration agreed to take thousands of illegal immigrants from Australia. Why? I will study this dumb deal, exclamation point. Could this be characterized as a blunder, or is the administration just fixing Obama's dumb deal? We're joined now by columnist and Fox News contributor Charles Krauthammer, author of the great book, Things That Matter. Charles, thanks a lot for joining us. Happy to be here. So fighting with Australia, people say, pick your battles. I don't think they mean all of them. So I think you could certainly criticize um, our president on the basis of that, like why fight with Australia? But the core question is an interesting one. Why should America take 1,250 refugees from Somalia, Iran, and Iraq that Australia doesn't want? Well, first of all, full disclosure, I'm married to an Australian. Yes, you are. <laughs> I love Australians, so I'm under some constraints with my dual loyalty. But I think it's a perfectly <laughs> valid question. You know, the Australians have probably the strictest laws against illegal immigration. Yes. They take you to these islands they are far away. They are not a pleasant place, and you're stuck there forever. So I think it is a question. It's a question you've got to ask Obama, of course. Why did he agree to this? And I mentioned this a little earlier uh, tonight, but in September there was a deal in which Australia agreed to accept refugees sitting in Costa Rica. These are refugees from Central America. Now, that is very odd as well. Why did that happen? I suspect there's a quid pro quo here. There was some agreement, because otherwise it's incomprehensible. Yes. It's not quite understandable. And the other thing is, apart from the fact that it makes no strategic sense, unless it was a kind of a deal, we're going to take your refugees, you'll take ours, so it doesn't look as bad domestically. Because remember, for an Australian prime minister, they don't want to violate this sort of rule that anybody who comes to our shores is not going to stay. Right. They're afraid that all of Asia, there are a lot of people in Asia, are going to come in boats tomorrow. So as a domestic issue, they can't allow this. So maybe they calculated, if we take Costa Ricans off the hands of the U.S. and they take ours, it'll look better, perhaps. But the other thing is, Obama should not have done this. Right. This is a landmine he left behind. On the other hand, Trump was stuck with the landmine. So he had a choice to make. I guess he got upset, and may, he has a right to get upset at Obama and at the Australians for landing him with this. Because, again, there's no good answer as to why. But nonetheless, he ended up doing the right thing, which was to say, I don't like it, I don't even understand it, but i got to honor it because it's been done. My sense is that Obama felt that third world immigration into America is just good for its own sake because it makes America better in some way that he was never forced to explain. What I find so striking is this was public. I noticed this when the story broke right. several months ago. And no one pressed the then president on it. Yeah. And I think the underlying assumption is that former British colonies have a moral obligation to take poor people from around the world. And I wonder where that obligation comes from. I think it's larger than that. I think it's first world. You go to Europe, you go to the Swedes. Uh, they call themselves the superpower of right. international of philanthropy. They pride themselves. You know, it's sort of, it's a residue of imperialism. We're no longer imperialist. That was a terrible thing. We are now going to be the benefactors of the world. We'll demand nothing in return. In the past, when you were an imperialist, you sat in their countries. You, you might have, quote, unquote, civilized them, but you took all their natural resources. But wait, there was no more brutal imperial power than imperial Japan, right. which invaded a lot of Asia and really messed it up. No one expects that Japan will take any refugees ever. And, but the Japanese themselves don't. What I'm saying is the former Western powers, imperial powers, still feel what the French used to call uh, the, uh, the, the civilatrice, their obligation to civilize. Yes. And that, I think, persists no longer in the brutal way, the rapacious way, the way where, where, where you took their wealth. But that persists. And there's a sense in the entire West, particularly in Europe, that we have an obligation, sort of, I don't know, because we were so historically lucky, that we ended up advanced and they ended up not advanced. Yes. And thus we owe the world. You know, it, perhaps it's biblical in some sense, but uh, it does manifest itself in very weird ways. Yes.